Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Path to One Million, episode 93. So we're going to take a trip back in time. I want to share a story with you. I was really big in the biking at one point in time, and I'm thinking about getting back into it again, thinking about setting a goal for that, probably something to be obtained for next year, another story for another time. I was, when I was living in Huntington Beach, there was a biking trail uh, not far from where I was living. So what I would do is I would climb on to my bike and I would bike it. And at that time, I really didn't know what I was doing. I had a nice bike and I had the, the spandex gear. I had a helmet. I had a backpack that I would take with me. I would put like bottled water in it and I would go out and I would just bike. And one morning I got up and I felt like really good. I, this was like a Sunday morning. I felt really super good. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. So I climbed on my bike and I just started biking. And of course, being in Southern California, I thought, you know, if I keep pursuing this trail at some point in time, this trail is going to end. So let's see how far it will go. So I started off in Huntington Beach and I just biked and biked and biked. And I had my headset in. I was listening to electronic music, which was like, I think that track was like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but it was like pretty much the same beat. And I was timing it to my legs and I was feeling really good. And I'm just bike, 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 bike. Finally, I get to some point where I think it's like the end of the of the trail and I had made it to Yorba Linda, which is about 22 or 23 miles away from Huntington Beach. And I was shocked because I never biked that before in my life. Well, now I'm in Yorba Linda. Obviously, I have to bike back. So the next day I or not the next day, excuse me, uh, I climb back onto my ba my bike after I take about an hour break and I bike all the way from Yorba Linda back down to Huntington Beach on this trail. It was super beautiful, super nice. I could feel the offshore breeze hitting me. It was keeping me cool. I was loving it. My legs were feeling really good. I was like a, like a machine, right? Like my legs were like pistons as I was going. Make it back to Huntington Beach. It was probably like maybe at that point in time, I'd say like maybe five or six in the afternoon when this happened. And I got back there and I was feeling great, you know, and I, you know, I drank some water uh, while I was there and I ate some food. I wasn't, really wasn't too hungry. I think my body was more in shock than anything. But I remember, uh, you know, just, you know, coming back there and, um, you know, just crashing at my place, took a shower to rinse off and stuff. I was feeling really good. It got to be about seven or eight o'clock and I said, you know, I got to get up for work tomorrow. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, conk out for the night. So climb into bed and boom, I'm out. When my alarm went off the next morning at six o'clock, holy sweet Moses, it was like the worst hangover that I had ever had in my entire life. My head was pounding like nobody's business. My body just ached. It hurt to move, it hurt to walk. I mean, just to get up out of bed to go to the bathroom was a major feat. I almost had to crawl to make that happen, but it was just so bad, it was so horrible, and I was completely just trying to figure out what in the, what in the world was happening to me. Worst hangover ever. I didn't even have a party story to go with it. Like, oh man, last night I got so wasted, blah, blah, blah. Nope, that did not happen. I actually went to bed like early. I, I had to call in sick that day. I was like, man, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm, I'm absolutely just, I, I, am, I am hurting today. Well, at some point in time through, throughout the day, I started to feel a little bit better. And by then I had, because uh, usually, usually I keep some soup in the cupboard as reserve for when I get sick, cause it's just super easy to heat up and stuff. So I had like some chicken noodle soup and stuff and supposedly chicken noodle soup cures everything. So I had that all in the cupboard and I was like heating it up throughout the day and I was just trying to eat, trying to eat. I tried to drink a little bit more water. I was not thirsty. I was not hungry like all day. It was kind of like I was forcing myself to eat it cause I knew I needed something in my stomach. I needed some kind of energy. And I got up Tuesday morning and I actually felt normal. So I'm like, cool, I can go to work. So when I was at work, and of course I didn't think anything about it, I didn't think there was a connection between biking those 45 miles versus what happened to me the next day. It was just for some reason I thought maybe I'd gotten sick or something with something I never knew. So I remember the next day I was talking to um, uh, this lady at work and her name is Dana. And Dana and her husband at that time, and it was, I don't know if they still are, but at that time uh, Dana was really big into biking. So I was talking to her and having some conversation and I said, yeah, I woke up with the worst hangover yesterday stuff and da, 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 da. And she said, oh, that's because you bonked. And I never heard of this term before, bonking. 
And I was like, what in the world is that? Well, in the cycling world, if you don't, if you don't hydrate yourself, if you don't replenish the minerals that your body needs, then it feels like you're having a hangover the next day. So she's like, you know, when you bike, what you really should do is you should probably take your water pack and make it like 50% Gatorade, 50% water, and then just keep drinking it all the time. Don't wait till you get thirsty because by the time you get thirsty, your body's already dehydrated. More importantly, don't bike 45 miles, build up to it. And uh, that was probably the first time ever that I ever gotten exposed about this relationship with what we intake uh, into our bodies versus the output that is from it. And so, of course, then I started, uh, whenever I started biking or exercising or anything else like that, I made sure that I always had a Gatorade handy. I never put it in my water pack because I didn't know if it was going to get sticky or anything else in there because, you know, at that time, the only Gatorade I was buying was like the sugar stuff. So uh, I was a little bit nervous about making sure that it was cleaned out, but I would always make sure that when I was biking, that I always had plenty of nutrients. There was this other stuff that's called goo and it comes in this packet and it's full of all kinds of electrolytes and sugar, whatever it is, supposedly easy for your stomach to digest. So I would shoot one of these goo packs up while I was out there, uh, just you know, doing what I could to make sure that my body was getting the nutrients. Now, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, if I ever did anything like bicycling a long ways or anything else, you know, it just, I don't know, I guess I was immune to it or something. I guess as a kid, you really are indestructible, but as you get older and your body changes, that's not simply the case. So one of the things that I've always been like aware of, and I've been aware of that more as I've been setting these body goals, like for instance, the, 20 by, the 25 by five uh, K exercise plan uh, that I have coming up here. And actually, I just think it starts in a couple of weeks, but with that plan there, I've been really cognizant of the fact of, of what I'm eating and is my body getting the right nutrients. And there are some days where I have plenty of energy, but it's like my brain is in a fog, right? Or there's other days where my brain seems to be very clear, but my body, my body just doesn't have any energy. It's like I can't get moving. I can't move that ball forward. So lately I have been uh, doing some research online, trying to figure out what are the right combination of nutrients for me to have. Plus the fact that uh, I'm in my fourth decade on this planet. So I need to be aware of the fact that, hey, you know what? I need to make sure that I'm monitoring what I'm putting into my, my body and experimenting, see what's, you know, see what's going on. And one of the things that I uh, got this last week that I thought might help me out, give me more brain food, is these uh, neotropic uh, vitamins. So the, you know, the whole premise behind them is, is that it's this, uh, f this formula of these different types of vitamins or nutrients or whatever it is that is good for your brain. So it's like brain fuel, so to speak. Uh, but also too, is that, you know, part of the fuel for your brain is certain kinds of fat. So I've been playing around with uh, grass fed butter, for instance, because that supposedly has the, the, the fats that your brain needs, as well as making sure that I have enough carbs coming in uh, to make sure that, you know, my brain is, is uh, my brain's functional, but also too, is that I have the energy when I run. So I've noticed that over this last week, when I have been running, my pace has actually started to go uh, down. So at one point in time, I was like 11, 11 miles in a minute. And then it went to uh, like, you know, 10 minutes and 40 seconds. So I'm getting like a little bit 20 seconds faster. And of course, when you're running for 30 minutes, those 20 seconds do make a difference, you know, if you're covering that same speed. But the only way that happens though is by experimenting and just making sure like what are the good kind of carbs that I should be having. And this led this whole thing about simple carbs versus complex carbs and what foods have all these different energies in there. So, you know, it reminds me of the whole thing about A-B testing, right? And I know I've talked about this before, but when you find something that works, go ahead and tweak something in there to see if you do get a better result. And for me, of course, I'm experimenting with this on my body, uh, but it also applies to, and I know I referenced this before, but last week, running some tests with my uh, LinkedIn lead generation client that I were working on. And we've been, you know, we perfected their scripting, we got everything dialed in. And then it was like, okay, well, let's see if that we can, uh, if we can tweak the message to see if we get a better response. And so far, the response has actually been very positive. So it's been an uptick, not a tremendous uptick, but it has been an uptick nonetheless. So we're going to keep experimenting, experimenting with that to keep going. So you know, the moral of the story is, is that, you know, everybody's body is different. What it is that you do, how you consume food, there is no one size fits all. So really it just, it boils down to what, what are you doing uh, if, you're, if you're on this path to, to improve or to be better or to be more healthy? 
What is it that you're tweaking? What is it that you're doing that is going to help you achieve your specific goals or your specific, uh, specific um, or keep you on track for your specific agenda? Anyways, uh, that was just something that was rattling around in the back of my head. Thought I would share that with you guys today. I hope you guys are doing really well and that you have a wonderful week on this Monday morning. And I will catch you in the next video. I'll talk to you later. Bye.